Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. This is day day three on this job site, and this is part two of a two-part series. Here's those screeds I was talking about in part one that I want to talk about today. And what it is, it's part of a spin screed system. You can see it there in the garage. Um, it rides on top of those metal runners. It's a 5-8 steel stake or steel piece of short piece of rebar and then they have these little uh, chairs that sit on top of the rebar and then your uh, metal the two inch quarter by 12 foot steel sits in those and you ride right on top the idea is for that spin screed to sit on top of those and come on down screed it off so that's what we're going to use here today We actually attempted to use the spin screed for a little bit here, but uh, it didn't it kind of came apart on us. So I didn't really have the time to put it back together. So I just went back to uh, the 12 foot aluminum straight edge. I'm going to give that spin screed uh, another shot another day, but today wasn't the day. Too much going on to uh, experiment. But we are using that screening portion of the system. Those metal pieces, the rebar actually that's driven into the ground will stay in there. The plastic chairs that that steel sets in will, will um, just slide down onto the next chairs as we, as we pour out here. And this is a 3000 PSI big rock mix. Initially, we started uh, tamping the concrete, and uh, we got away from that because we didn't, really didn't need to. In some mixes, you might have to do that, but this mix is good to where you can just hit it with a ball float, and all your rocks and cream comes up. That's half-inch rebar on two-foot centers. We have it dobied up in the air and we're going to tailgate everything. The first portion that we tailgated was pretty easy because the chutes could reach. But we, when we get into this middle area, it's going to be a lot of shovel work. So in part one, um, the demo guy, David Lane, Lane Company, he likes to do demolition. Mostly of uh, buildings, what he really likes to demo. But I got him in here on this, and then his son decided to come out the second day because he wanted to uh, get a chance at laying concrete down and l try to learn how to finish concrete. So you'll see him throughout this project um, experiment with some tools like the funny trowel, some other little odds and ends. We can't really back in the concrete truck here because if we come off the edge of that asphalt with a full load, it's most likely going to break break the asphalt off. So we got to stay up on top of the alley with the truck. And we just have to drag the concrete. And that's where the tamp really came in handy because we actually use that to pull large amounts of concrete up the hill. So we got a good, this is 26 feet wide and 63 feet long. So we're going to pull it basically about 13 feet up the hill here. Now on the saw cut pattern that I'm going to be doing on here, I'm going to be using that Milwaukee that we're giving away. I'm going to freehand it off of the chalk line. And we're going to show um, how, how it worked out. Right here is Big Blue. We've already bowl floated this twice. And now we're running Big Blue on it. And I've got the head cam going. 
and that has a rocker arm on it so I can get out there quite a ways and I know I'm gonna be able to get it back because I can just twist the handle to change the angle of attack now this concrete was going off really well even though we had a, a, a lot of cloud coverage um, it went off really well because um, it's a good mix there's the spin screed there we're just going to clean that up and get it ready for a potential next job the winner for the Milwaukee tool set giveaway is Devin Touche we'll also post his name in the description of this video the saw cut pattern we're going to um, line it up with the saw cut that you see here on this end of the joining parking lot and then there's another saw cut on the other existing end of the, this ad addition and we'll just snap a line across even though they're not perfectly parallel off of the house or off the building there's one i think they're about two inches off when i measured but we're just going to go at that angle and then we're going to run another four cuts in the other direction so they'll all be about 13 by 13 squares. <clears throat> this concrete we poured here was six inches deep. Maybe a little more in some areas, especially around that electrical vault. Here's the funny trowel here. We've got a Fresno with weights on it going on the other end. We're not going to really do any knee boarding on this, on this chunk of concrete here. We're going to try to hit everything with poles. Funny trowels, Fresno's big blue. Um, the only, only knee boarding we're going to have to do is right along the edge of the building. And that's about it. And then we can just go ahead and broom it. And we're going to broom it downhill. Right here is the uh, new guy, Funny Trowel, and he did really well his first time out. Oh no, this is me, sorry. But he will be Funny Troweling because I'm wearing the head cam. And I recognize those gloves. Those are the ones I was wearing. But he will be funny trying the last portion. And surprisingly for his first time on a funny trial, he did really well. You'll see that coming up here pretty soon. This particular broom is 50% nylon, 50% horsehair. So it really works good for this type of stuff. You can really control um, the texture. If you noticed on the sides on either side of this parking lot we put four four inch sleeves that way we can slide uh, bullards in there later if need be to block off this area and those go two feet deep or four inch diameters just some sleeves basically in the concrete saves you having to core it later So we've almost broomed out the first two loads because this was three truck loads and they were all tens there that's a max load over here here he is our apprentice for the concrete finishing dem was really his specialty but he's good on that funny trial as you can see there 
Uh, for a lot of time, first timers on one of those will um, dig in when they try to go the other direction. Or they'll leave a mark flipping it from one direction to the other. So here's the knee boarding just along the edge of the building. We're going to be striping this parking lot also. I'm going to have a striping guy come out and put the uh, parking stalls in here. But here's your finished par finished product. It's a little rougher than I would do a residential driveway because this is more of a commercial setting. So it's going to take more of a beating. You're going to get oil on there. That's a metal shop inside. A lot of automotive in this area. So you're looking at a lot of grease and grime. So you need some good texture. You can see those sleeves where I'm going to stick those bullets sticking up. But since I use just some plastic drain pipe, when I come over here to saw cut and I get ready to run my 4 inch right angle grinder to complete the cuts against the building, I'll just nip those little stub outs off. Here we are, um, this is the next next day, we're going to saw cut this. The key to saw cutting is you got to get it within, you really should try to get it within 24 hours, otherwise you're going to start pulling cracks before you can get your control cuts in. And the only way you can do that is by cutting it when it's fresh. And what happens a lot of times when you're cutting concrete that fresh, you get spalling because it is kind of soft. You'll get chunks flying out where the diamond blade hits the concrete. So what I do here, which I forgot to mention, I put fiber mesh in the concrete, which I happen to stock and I sell it on my storefront. But when you put the fiber mesh in there, you can go ahead and cut it the next day and not worry about those big chunks flying off of the concrete because the fiber holds it together. So here's the Milwaukee here. It's got its own water reservoir. It's like a one, one man show when you have this set up. The only thing that I'm waiting for is the front backpack with the vacuum pickup. That way I can run, I can pick the vacuum up at the same time. I'll put the water at the front of the blade going in. And I'll put the vacuum adapter at the back. That way um, it's a one man operation. One pass, clean, cut, no dust. Not a lot of noise. If you notice I have no earplugs. And I'm not wearing a mask. So that's because there's not a lot of noise because it's battery operated. And uh, with the water running there's no dust. So that's freehand right there it's actually straighter than all the other joints um, in the other pores that were done before now all that cream we're just gonna wet vac that up shovel it into a bucket so all our saw cuts are completed now we're striping this And it makes it real easy to do striping when you have one of these machines. Now since I've already pre-striped this, I already ran a string line. Normally what you would do if there was nothing to um, follow, you would pull a string line and just paint over it. You could run the string to the middle of the uh, line or you could run it to the outside edge. It just depends. How you like run it? How you like following your lines? But you can kind of get this is actually one week later, so it's still curing out pretty slowly, still pretty dark. And that's due to the depth of this. Plus, we had some rain. We had about two to three days of rain after the pour, so we got a slow cure going right here, which is ideal for for high strength. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good day. Happy Thanksgiving.